Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and if we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and scroll on down to school, we are on Lesson 5, Arrays and Loops. We've done two videos on arrays, one video on loops. We saw, if we pop in here, how to use an array and why we would use an array, a list of things. Um, we There's a practice section on arrays as well. Mm, then we looked at loops. We looked at a traditional for loop. Uh, we saw looping through an array. We saw a continue and break. We've not seen a while loop. We've not seen a zim loop. So let's go in and see what those things are. We'll reduce this down pop into the code that we've been working in. There's a loop 10 times. We also saw how to, uh, we were accessing colors in an array, but there were only three colors, yet we were looping 10 times. So we saw how, how to use the modulus to go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And it ended up creating, open in browser, it ended up creating this. Bidoop, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So that's where we had gone to. We moved things over by multiplying the loop number by a certain amount. So each time we're moving it over by 100. And if the radius of these things are 50, that means uh, that these are going to bump right into each other. If we said 110 or something like that, then we would get a little bit of space. We could have also looped within a loop. We saw a loop within a loop, loop within a loop, and change this so that it moved it down a little bit more, uh, 100 down each time, based on, say, the, the next loop number, which might be J, it often is. And then we get a tile, much like Zim tile does. As a matter of fact, that's what Zim tile does. Instead of forcing us to constantly be using a loop within a loop and, and doing all that little math stuff ourselves, tile does it for us. All right, well, let's try the something new then. Let's try a while loop. So just to be complete, or somewhat complete anyway, with our JavaScript loops, there's also a few ES6 loops uh, for each, but ooh, we're, uh, we, we could look at that. There's a for each, there's a, a fours, some uh, variable or constant, or I guess it would be a variable at that point some variable in or on. <laughs> so there's a few ES6 ones that you can look at. Uh, we're going to do the basics. And one of those basics is a while loop right here, while. That is true, do what's in between here. Now you would use a while loop probably if you don't know kind of what's going on here. It's not an index number. You're not just increasing by a number. You could use a while loop for that. As a matter of fact, in the Zim School lesson, we show you how to do a traditional for loop as a while loop. Uh, but usually this is some other type of condition. For instance, if we have some odds, let odds equal a random number out of 100. There we go. So we might say while odds is greater than 30. So that's 30% uh, odds or more. Then uh, let's zog odds like so. Now, if we just left it like this, we run into a problem because say we did a random number and it was 50 or 60 or something, that's bigger than, that's great, but it's always gonna stay that. It's always going to be bigger than. So this loop will be always true. Odds over 30 will always be true. It would loop forever. And then JavaScript would give you this message saying, oh, by the way, we're slowing down the browser. Do you wanna stop this script? And you say, yes. So what we really need to do is roll the odds again inside of here. So now we're going to say, hey, the odds are now some other random number out of 100. Do we want to keep on looping? So what happens is if this keeps rolling bigger than 100, that's great. It will keep on looping. Or sorry, bigger than 30. It'll keep on looping. As soon as it gets less than 30, say it's 20, then it won't loop anymore, and it won't print these odds of 20. All right, that's how that works. Let's try it. We refresh here and open a browser at 12. Or <laughs> use the browser, open a console. And what do we have? Oh, we got 10 and 30 when this is like stuff from before. So I don't think we made the odds. Ah, here we did. 97, yes. 47, bigger than 30, yes. 60, 39, but then, oh, we must have gotten less. 
And same deal there, 31. <laughs> oh, no, 31 is that uh, 10 and 31 came from before. Line 144 is what we're looking at. Indeed. So there we go. That's a while loop. All right, let's uh, comment that out for now. And have a look at a Zim loop. Now, you recall, here's the traditional loop right here. For let i equal 0 to i is less than 10, increase our i each time. And here we're making a bunch of circles. Let's do the same thing with a Zim loop. Just do it right in here so you can see both. Uh, loop 10 times. Call this arrow function. So here's the arrow function, like that. And we would drop that down onto the next line. Each time, Zim loop will give us the iterator number, i. And if we're only collecting one, then we don't need the round brackets. So this is ES6. Cool, huh? There it is. Loop 10 times. Each time, get the i. And we will zog i right there. So we refresh here, and uh, there they are, 0 to 9, coming from 140, uh, sorry about that, uh, 143. 0 to 9, coming from 143. So do you like that? Instead of all of this, blah, you got some lesser blah. <laughs> now the nice thing is about this is the loop, um, some amount, like 10, call this arrow function. Uh, arrow function, like that. And I don't know if you recall, but when we had a conditional, it was some conditional, like um, uh, on, or an on method like that, on some conditional, click, call this arrow function. You know what? I just had a I just had a thought. I don't think we ever showed you a timeout or a, an interval, but those are also time out like that. Some amount of time, one thousand. Call this arrow function, and then there's an interval as well. These are Zim intervals. Uh, one thousand. Call this arrow function. Uh, by the way, there is a Javis. I can't remember now. Did we see these or not? This is like a set time out. This is JavaScript. Set time out, not capitals there. But then we call the arrow function and then say how long. <laughs> it's like, Durr. All right, so it's the reverse of what all the rest of the things are. So when we made Zim, we brought in, we, we switched that around. Sorry, that's one of the only places where we you know, really switched something that, that JavaScript does. I would just said, you know, for years, I would always forget to put that there because you get so busy as to what's in this function. Here, you've got a bunch of stuff in here. And by the time you finish making your bunch of stuff, many lines, you forget to tack on the time at the end. So I never really liked it that way. It's better, I think, this way. Apparently, it's because uh, the time is optional. I was like, why are you doing a timeout or an interval with an optional time? You know. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> maybe maybe point zero zero percent of the time you might do that. So do you see what we've got going? We've got the round brackets, then you've got something at the beginning, call the function. 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 So the loop just fits right in with all these, these other things. Neat, huh? All right. So loop 10 times. Uh, now, that's great. It saves us some typing. Saves us, I think, some conceptual energy. We don't have to think about it as much. Um, but not only that, the loop, the Zim loop, adds uh, close to a dozen, maybe six, we'll call it, a whole bunch of different things that it can do. Uh, so there's one. If we want to loop backwards, we say true. There's another. So we know that quite often we want to loop backwards. There we go, loop backwards. Uh, I'll tell you why we want to loop backwards quite often, but there it is, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Any time we remove, we need to loop through uh, a container or something like that. We want to remove something. 
because you're removing something and the container is index based and your loop is index based, you want to uh, loop backwards so that you don't mix up the indexes. If you were looping forward and removing something, the, the remaining objects are now in a container at the wrong levels like because you've removed one from early on. So looping backwards in interactive media is, is quite common if you're hitting a monster and you want it to be removed. Okay, that kind of thing. It's fairly common, and we want to loop backwards. So there's a nice easy way. Speaking of looping through containers and things, let me show you what else the Zim loop can do. And do we have an array up here? I think we have an array of colors. Yeah, there was an array of colors. Let's show you looping through an array of colors. Loop. <laughs> we can spell loop. We can do it. Colors, comma. And now it's going to give us a color like that and we can zog the color so there is a there is now an ES6 way that is is this nice I can't remember what it's called it's uh, like a for each or something like that so um, anyway there is now a way that you can do that in ES6 but let's try this we refresh here. Oops. Ah, desktop review. And we are now getting the colors. Uh, by the way, Zim colors convert into HTML colors, and those are the HTML colors of blue, green, and pink. What else can we zog through? Or loop through, sorry. Um, so that's that one. We can also loop through an object literal. So if you have an object literal like um, const uh, person is equal to, and then we have uh, eyes colon blue. Well, if we say quote blue, then we'll end up getting a, an answer of quote blue. And legs, well, <laughs> don't want to be so morbid. Um, what else? Uh, uh, what do we do with the person? Hat, <laughs> colon false. <laughs> there we go. That person is not wearing a hat. Blue eyes with no hat. And we can loop through those if we want. We can say um, loop person, like so, comma, call this function. And each time we're given the uh, property, prop, comma, and then the value, value. So we're given two things this time, the property and its value this time. So if we zog the prop, comma, and its value, we can get those. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> desktop reveal again. I'm with it today. So eyes is the prop. Blue is the value. Hat is the prop. False is the value. So we can easily, and by the way, in both these cases, when we when we get the color, we can get the color, but if we want, we can also get I, and we can get a total. So color, I, comma, total. So you can get the Zim loop will give you these things as well. So if we refresh here, 0, 1, 2 is the index, and the total is 3. And the same deal down here, where we're getting the prop and the value. Then after that, you get the i and the total. Prop, value, i, and total now. i is blue, 0 is the index, 1 is the index, and 2s are the totals. Uh, I don't know if I should keep those in there. <laughs> Or not, maybe I'll just undo. You can have a look at Zim Loop to get that. We like that, the simplicity. Where it really kicks in, where Zim Loop is really, really handy though, is when you want to loop through a container. So we made a bunch of uh, circles. Now, anytime you have a bunch of circles, here we've located them at, at this value and in that location, but really we should locate that in a container of circles. So it would be something like uh, const circles equals a new container. 
uh, if we set this to be the stage height and the stage, oh, <laughs> stage width, just seeing if you're awake, and stage height, how are you guys doing out there? Uh, then uh, dot add to the stage. Basically that simulates a stage. That just makes it something exactly like a stage. It's the stage width, stage height, it's a container it's sitting on on the stage. So if we happen to center it on the stage before, or position or locate it on the stage before, if we made a container that is a stage width and stage height, and then instead we center it in the container, containers called circles. So down here, Here's our loc, loc, uh, x and y, and then the next parameter is the container, which is called circles. So there we go. We've just added all of those circles to the container called circles. We won't see any difference here. So we refresh here. There they are on the stage. We refresh. There they are in the container. <laughs> no big deal, but now we can move that container around, we can hide the container, we can put events on the container, and, and, and things like that. We can also loop through the container. So let's loop through that container. And that looks like this. Uh, in this case, it is a Zim container. In this case, it's not a Zim object, and in this case, it, an array is not a Zim array. So that's an array. So we did not put a loop method on the array because that would be changing the methods of an array and that's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, it's up to you. And here's an object. Uh, we did not put the loop method on the, uh, on the object literal. We didn't say all object literals are going to have a loop method. That also is I mean, same kind of deal. Not, not necessarily a good thing to do. However, the Zim container is a Zim container, and we added a loop method to it. So you don't have to use it. You could loop through the container, which is called circles, and call the function like that. And each time you would be given a circle. There we go. So we're looping through the circles. Each time we're given a child. If we only need the child, then there we have it. But because the Zim container is, is a Zim container, we said, hey, our Zim containers are going to get a loop method. So we can put circles right here. Dot loop. Oop. Like, oops. Almost. There we go. So now it ends up looking like this. Circles. That's the container. Dot loop. So we're looping through circles. Each time we're given a circle. And with that circle, we can do whatever we want here. So we could say circle dot ska point two. All right, let's try it out. And we refresh here. Now our circles have had their scales set. What if we wanted to use i? So if we wanted to use i, the index number, to change the size of those circles uh, from smaller to bigger, for instance. Well, we're also given i as the next parameter, i. So the zim loop will give you the, whatever the, the child is of the container, followed by uh, the index number. So now the index number is going 0, 1, 2, 3. We could say start at least at point 2 and add, uh, usually it's a multiply, multiply by I, well, that would be zero, so we got to start there, plus some amount, 0.1 times I, something like that. I think that works. Uh, shall we try it? And we refresh here. There's, there they are getting bigger. Now, unfortunately, their centers start at the same, at the same part there. So we run into a bit of overlap. Uh, we could do a move a little bit and move each one a little bit more and more, or less and less and less, as I'm not sure which way we go. Right, cool, huh? Um, let's see. So isn't that neat? That's very powerful to have that. Now, if we wanted to remove, say, it was something like, uh, remember how we had the odds? If 
and is bigger than 0.5, then we want to circle dot remove from. There we go. So if our random number that just goes between 0 and 1 is bigger than 0.5, so if we've half the time, this is basically saying half the time, remove whichever circle we're on. In this case, we don't need the I, so it would look like that. So half the time, remove the circle. We're not doing the scaling anymore. We save this and we refresh, and something weird happened. F12. Circle is undefined. It's like, hmm. It looks like it's kind of working actually, but because of the error, we didn't get to the stage.update. Do you know what the problem is? Half the time we're removing the circles, we're looping through the circles anytime you remove something in a loop. This isn't Zim, this is any loop, even just a normal JavaScript loop. Anytime you remove something from that array that you're looping through or that container that you're looping through, you've got to loop backwards. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Comma true for loop backwards. True is loop backwards, like that. And now let's try her out and we won't get an error. Here we go. So no error. It removed a strange setting. <laughs> That's kind of cool. There we are, randomly removing half the circles from uh, our bunch of circles. Very cool. That's the Zim loop. There's also, remember back in the raw JavaScript or the for loop, we had a continue. Say we wanted to, um, uh, let's see, how do we do this? But, but, but uh, instead of removing it, uh, let's see. Okay, we'll do it this way. Um, if rand is greater than, oh, rand is greater than point uh, 0.5, we'll do it ha halfway again. Then I want to say circle dot ska twice as big, uh, half, as, half as big, 0.5. All right, but not only that, if that's the case, oh, I could do an else if, but anyway, this, this'll this do. If we do this one, I don't wanna do anything else in the loop, I want to continue. So back in the in the JavaScript loop, you would go continue. If you can spell it, continue, like so. So if we set the scale to be twice as big, we don't want to do anything else. Now we could have handled this with an if else, but imagine that there, there could be more things in here. So we just want to continue. We want to get out of the loop if we've already done this. Well, this doesn't work with a, because this is not a for loop, it's a zim loop. Now note what the zim loop is. The zim loop is a function. This is an arrow function right here. So if you want to exit a function, you use return return like so. So what this will do is it will return out of this function and then what Zim does is loops to the next function. So here's what happens. If it's going to get smaller we're not even going to test to see if we want to remove it. We're just going to return and that looks like this. Now you may not be able to tell so some are smaller and some are removed. Cool. I'm getting sort of these planetary, planetary, uh, let's see, there's the circle color. Let's put a little border on that, a dark. So there's a dark border that we just added to those circles. And it looks almost like I'm getting sort of like these, a planetary system. I suppose if we put it on a darker color, it would have looked better. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe we wouldn't have a dark border. <laughs> we'll make it. A, a, I'm not sure if a light border will look good at that point. Once we put it, once we put this thing on dark, all the way up. Once we put this on dark, 
dark. Then I suspect just the colors itself will look better than having a light. I don't know. Let's put it on black. I don't like that light border hitting, so now I don't think we need the border. There you go. And we refresh here. Right. There's our planetary system. Bloop, 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 bloop. Nice. Okay. So um, that was continue. But what if we want to break? So what if we want to stop completely? If we want to stop completely, then we return some sort of value. So just a plain return will skip. But if we want to stop, we can return false. So if false is a value. We could return um, what index number we're on. Why don't we do that? Oops. So there we collect the circle. We collect the index i. And let's return what i is like that. So this will tell us what number planet uh, we got to when we rolled over a 0.5. Uh, but if we return it, then we collect it here. So that's kind of neat. It, what it means is you can have some condition inside. Uh, oh, we haven't even seen an if statement. Sorry, I keep on using if statements and we see that next lesson. So we're almost there. Um, if you want to if, if you have a condition inside of your loop, and if it wants to break out of the loop, you can find out what specific information caused that to break. And that value gets returned, and sometimes that's useful. Occasionally, so uh, we can store it here. Let uh, answer equal, or index equal, let index equal that. So as it loops, it's going to end up returning a value. When it does, it exits out of all of the loop, and the value that gets returned can be stored here. So afterwards, we could zog, quote, planet num equals plus index, like so. All right, let's try it. There it got seven, there it made it to six. Let's, let's just quickly make some art. What we'll do is we'll comment out the circles. So that was where? Just comment out all this circle thing. Or we could modify it. How about uh, we'll modify it? We'll, we'll comment out this later looping stuff. And we'll modify this to make us some art. Hello there. And instead of tiling the new circle, let's try this. I'm getting a call. Somebody, one of our viewers out there has called in and they said, that's a great idea. We're definitely wanting to make some art. So we've got this container circles. Instead of only 10 times when we make art, we often want to loop and uh, make more than 10 of them. Let's make a hundred of them. And then we're going to say new circle. Um, we'll make it around between two numbers, like 20 and 50, like that. So that's a random, every time it loops, we're going to get a random radius between these two amounts. We will say for colors, we'll pass in the Zim, uh, Zim pick or Zim V value of an array of colors. So that would be red, green, blue, pink, yellow. Good. There's a bunch of random colors. If we want, well, it's on black, so we probably don't need a border. So there we're making a circle. We will dot loc this to be rand stage width and rand stage height like that. And we'll put it in our circles container just because we have it, I guess. <laughs> circles, like that. All right, so we've uh, created our circle and placed them randomly, random size, random colors. 
And this will give us some art already. Ooh. Ooh, ah. Uh, maybe we do want a border on those circles so that uh, when things like that happen, we can see what's going on. Alternatively, we can drop the alpha of these. So we'll bring our chaining down like so and dot alp. And so there's our alpha and we'll uh, do a random number. As a matter of fact, well, we'll do a random number between um, 0.1 and, or <laughs> did I write 2? 0.2, 0 0.1 and 1, I guess. Okay. So there's a random number for the alpha. And now they have various alphas. I think we could go with a bigger okay. and then let's dot animate them dot animate the props of these to be I think the scale so um, scale will go up to a scale of two we've already given them different sizes but that's the scale that we're animating and we'll loop that true. And we'll also rewind it. It's better if it rewinds instead of going small to big, small to big, small to big. It goes small to big to small to big to small to big to small. Rewind true. And we should also have a random time. So the time would be, uh, we can use the, this is also a zim v value here on time. So a min of 1,000, and that's one second, and a max of, I don't know, 10 seconds. That's good, and we refresh here. Oh, ooh, oh, nice. What do you guys think? Oh, we got some art. Oh. All right. Uh, good. Maybe that circle could have had, is this a circle right here? Let's put a border of darker. Ah, black, probably. Not darker. Like that. So a darker border. And we refresh. F12. F11. F12. F11. There we go. Nice. All right. Oh. Now, I've never seen that before. That looks very beautiful. <laughs> I like it. And if we refresh again, we're going to see a slightly uh, different arrangement because we've put them in random places. There's a thing called spacebar art. <laughs> Josh Davis uh, coined that one, I think. <laughs> we just keep hitting the spacebar. We, we, we capture a key down event, hit the spacebar, and we get new things. If we go control R here, we're getting, we're getting new things. Oh, I like that one. All right. This has been a Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract. I am, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I might know this guy. And this one. Ooh, imagine running through the world like this with rings. And here's the way out. Ow. Inverted, so zombie. <laughs> yes. Okay, so tune in next time when we move to a new lesson, and that new lesson is on conditionals. We peaked at conditionals uh, a while. There's also some work in debugging and things like that. We peaked at conditionals in a while. Uh, or every once in a while, but now we're going to see them from the beginning. After that, we move into uh, more exciting worlds where we deal with things like these things called controls that give us particle emitters and all sorts of fun things to work with, parallax. Ciao! Looking forward to that. Bye-bye from Dr. Abstract. Come join us at zimjs.com and zimjs.com slash slack where we can talk about all these things. Make sure to peek at some examples and also uh, do your review of the lessons. Go into the Zim school and uh, work on that code. Ciao for now.